I'm joined now by Dr. Anna Mae Deal talking about DDW's Combined Translational Symposium on Obesity entitled Figuring Out Fat. And this is so challenging, but really such a critical topic in society today. And you're really looking at it from a multi-pronged approach. I think so. Um, we, like everybody else, is trying to figure out how we can get adults in, in the United States not to be overweight and obese. As you know, it's a big problem about a quarter to a third of adults are overweight or obese and and the same is true for our children so we're all struggling to figure out what can we do to become leaner and obviously the the easy solution would be to stop eating but that doesn't seem to be working so we're trying to understand what happens in the body when we are confronted with too many calories and how we can get the body to kind of turn off the normal things it would do to store food or store energy and make us fat. And so there are a number of different ways you can approach the problem. One would be to look at what we call preclinical models, which are small animals, anything as small as a fly to a mouse. And there have been very interesting studies which show us fundamental mechanisms that make the body store fat. And so once you know those kinds of things, you can figure out how to interrupt that process and hopefully then you wouldn't store fat and you wouldn't become obese. So that's one of the topics that's going to be on in the symposium. And then we have two others. One is going to be um, looking at things that we actually do to people right now that seem to be effective at weight loss. And there are two big approaches. One is you can have an endoscopy, uh, which is where doctors put a, a tube with a light on it down into your uh, esophagus and stomach. And then they can deploy different devices that would interfere with the way that the body normally processes food to store the food and this would interrupt that process. And we're hoping that by um, dissecting what happens after these approaches are deployed, we can understand better what was um, interfered with so that we can develop less invasive approaches to achieve the same end point. The research seems so critical in the basic science of it in the absence of being able to convince people <laughs> to right. change behavior. Right. You're really trying to tackle, I think, bigger ways to help them. Right, and I think that, that um, you know, we have very complex interactions between our brain and our intest gastrointestinal tract. And um, food is a pleasure, uh, but it's also a necessity. And probably there are uh, mistakes in the wiring apparatus that perhaps some people are born with and they don't recognize when they should be full even though they've eaten um, and, and it's even conceivable that you could be rewired something they call epigenetics um, either early in childhood frighteningly some studies even suggest while you're in your mother's womb that you could be being reprogrammed to develop these complications of obesity and obesity itself later in life so so trying to understand what goes wrong so that first we can prevent it from happening, hopefully, and then secondarily, if it's already happened, how can we um, get around that, that impediment and help people have a better and more healthy body weight. I know in the symposium you're also talking about a surgical approach. Yes, and so obesity surgery has been tremendously successful. And, and people, oddly, would, would rather undergo surgery than, than make lifestyle modifications sometimes. Uh, but to be fair, some people are already so obese that lifestyle modifications are practically impossible. If you weigh 400 or 500 pounds, it's not easy to go to the gym. So how do we help people with that? And some people are beginning to think about the idea of surgical approaches, particularly if they could be easily reversed, as sort of bridges to getting people to a weight where they may actually be able to do lifestyle modifications. So getting you from 800 pounds down to 300 pounds or something like that. Um, so surgery has been very effective. We know that it reverses a lot of the health-related complications of obesity. So trying to understand how that worked uh, might give us some ideas of medications or other approaches that could be used. And hopefully one day something as invasive as surgery won't be necessary to cure obesity. Well, it's so critical given that there are so many people who are struggling with their weight and with obesity. Fascinating topic. Thank you so much. You're welcome.